Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Another good day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you have an announcement, if you could get ready to uh, give it. I'm just going to go through the uh, bulletin a little bit. So we have uh, upper greeters and lower greeters still need filled and nursery still need filled. So that's on that back podium back there. Try to check that out and fill things in. Not been filling that out very much. So if you haven't been on there for a while, if you would consider that, that would be great. The family meeting announcement there. Uh, we're going to follow the pattern that we've been doing of the family meeting is going to be part of the service. So, you know, there's not going to be like an extended time after the normal service hours. So we're going to have kind of a schedule for that, that meeting. So that's going to be really good. So everybody, please uh, come for that. And then United Worship is tonight at Horizons. So 6.30 to 9.30. You can go there for some more worship and uh, be used by the Lord to minister to others. It would be good and praying for others. It's always a really powerful time with that group. Yes. Oh, okay. And they're streaming it too. So uh, you could pull them up on uh, Facebook and, and uh, follow the stream and worship along. So that's good to know. Are there any other announcements anyone has? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and rise. I'm going to read from the Word and pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing in us. Help us, Father, to take steps of obedience this morning, to be used by you, to use our gifts. Father, to bring an increase. Father, that we would be uh, like the servant that came back and was fruitful with what you gave him, Father. We want to have that same heart this morning. We want to be fruitful with what you've given us. So help us, Father, to, to be ready to hear and ready to minister and ready to be uh, worshiping you as we head into worship now. We love you. And we honor you. Amen. Psalm 124 or 128. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy and it will be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, for thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Indeed, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Amen? Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Get in there. Amen. As we enter in and as we engage with the Lord this morning in this part of our worship, this is a section of it and a piece of it as we musically work. Let us just, I guess, in that heart be excited and, and as well thinking into what God has done and what He is, what He means. He has shown us favor in our nation and as a people that's unending. The favor of God is so great and just to, to understand that and, and to be thankful we want to sing, and that's this first song is just, I give thanks. You've shown favor unending. And you have shown me favor unending. You have given your life for me And my heart, it knows of your goodness Your blood has covered me And I will arise and give thanks to you, Lord my God And your name I will bless with my whole heart You have shown mercy you have shown mercy to me, and I give thanks to you, Lord. You 
have poured out your healing upon us. You have set the captives free. And we know it's not what we've done. But by your hand alone, we will arise and give thanks to you, Lord our God. And your name we will bless with our whole hearts. You have shown mercy, you have shown mercy to us. We give thanks to you, Lord. You, O oh Lord, are the healer of my soul. You, O oh Lord, are the gracious redeemer. You've come to restore us again and again. I will arise and give thanks to you, Lord my God, and your name I will bless with my whole heart. You have shown mercy, you have shown mercy to me, and I give thanks to you, Lord. I will arise, and I will arise and give thanks to you, Lord my God. And your name I will bless with my whole heart. You have shown mercy, you have shown mercy to me. And I give thanks to you, Lord. And I give thanks to you, Lord. And I give thanks to you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you so much, Father. We praise your name and we give you honor and glory, Lord. We thank you, Father. Extending that mercy and that grace to us, Lord. Favor, it's unending. Favor in our lives, the things we have, Father. It's awesome. And we worship you, Lord. Continue to bless you, Father. You have delivered my soul from death And you have kept my feet from falling You have delivered my soul from death That I may walk before you In the light of your life In the light of your life I live for you in the light of your life I see the truth in the light of your light. Everything's new in the light of your light. In the light of your light. I love your face in the light of your light. I find my place in the light of your light. I know your grace in the light of your light. You have delivered my soul from death, and you have kept my feet from falling. You have delivered my soul from death, that I may walk before you in the light of your life. In the light of your life, I live today in the light of your life. I hear you say in the light of your life, I am the way in the light of your life. In the light of your life, I hear your voice in the light of your life. I shall rejoice in the light of your life. You are my choice in the light of your life. You have delivered my soul from death, and you have kept my feet from falling. You have delivered my soul from death, that I may walk before you in the light of your life. In the light of your life, I shall 
I'll abide in the light of your life. Where love resides in the light of your life. The blood is applied in the light of your life. In the light of your life. Sins are confessed in the light of your life. Failures are dressed in the light of your life. And righteousness in the light of your life. You have to live. You have kept my feet from falling. You have delivered my soul from death. That I may walk before you in the light of your life. In the light of your life. Death is undone in the light of your life. Victory is won in the light of your life. I overcome in the light of your life. In the light of your life, I am at rest in the light of your life. And faithfulness in the light of your life, I am so blessed in the light of your life. You have delivered my soul from death, and you have kept my feet from falling. You have delivered my soul from death That I may walk before you In the light of your life In the light of your life Amen Amen, thank you Lord It delivered people and people set free. Man. To walk in his life, abide in his plan. Amen. Amen. Covered by his banner, covered by his righteousness, covered by his purposes. Yes, Lord, we worship you. He brought me to his banqueting table. 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 table. And his banner over me is love. Yes, it is. And his banner over me is love. Yes, I'm my beloved's and he is my heart. Yes, I am my beloved's and he is my heart. Yes, I'm my beloved's and he is my heart. And his banner over me is love. Yes, it is his banner over us. And his banner over me is love. We can feel, we can feel the love of God in this place. We believe your goodness, we receive your grace. We delight ourselves at your table of God. You do all things well, just look in our lives. It's over me.
something in declaring that together we can feel God's love and we believe in his goodness and that we receive it we receive his grace and we're saying it we're declaring it and we delight ourselves is our soul is our body is our work delighted in God this morning is it delighted in the things that he is and that he is that he's shown us to be we're saying it we're saying that it is we're seeing that you do all things well just look at our lives. It's not look at our lives how good they are. It's not a proud look, but it's a look of, of awesome, great things God has done for us as a people, individually. It's, it's, it's awesome. He's blessed us and given us His banner, His covering. We worship you, Lord, for that. We worship you, Father. You're so good. You're so good, Father. You're so good to us, Lord. Father, don't let us grow cold. We're ashamed to proclaim it. Father, continue to burn. I'm here to buy gold, 
finding the fire Naked and poor Wretched and blind I come Blow me a while So I won't be ashamed Go light the fire again Lord, a fire that consumes, not kindles, but fire. Not white ash with small red cherries hidden, but flames. Father, continue to birth that vision in us. As a people, individually, Father, to be on fire, lit on fire. Not covered with ash, where the heat is at the bottom. Not being able to break through the, the surface and get to the other things, Father. But on fire and flames, we would churn, we would churn, Father, and worship you, Father, with that fire. Refined. Refined. Refined, Father. For your purposes, Lord. Us continue to see into that refining work, oh Lord. And all who are thirsty and all who are weak, come to the fountain. And all who are we come to the fountain and dip your heart in the stream of life, pain and the sorrow, be washed away in the waves of his mercy. Cries out to me, we sing, come Lord Jesus, come, come Lord Jesus, come. 
And all who are thirsty And all who are weak Come to the fountain Isaiah 55 it says, Ho, it says it with an exclamation point. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. And why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Father, our souls need you. You are the water of life the fullness, righteousness, and truth that our souls need from the depths
to the physical, to life, to light, Father. And Father, as we ask in this song for you to come, you are here. Your spirit is here, but we're asking you to invade, invade us. We're saying, Holy Spirit, come in every door and window in me. God, examine and lift up, work through all the processes, Lord, that I need to see. Because we're thirsty vessels who need God to come in and the Spirit to come in and work. And the Lord gives. And the Lord gives. He gives in abundance. His word says, come by without. Because he's paid, he's given. Come by without money. Come by without having to spend, but, but abide in me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue that work in us, Lord. Continue that work in us, Lord. Mm. Oh. Come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream of life. Pain and sorrow be washed away. Waves of His mercy, Father, Your mercies, new every morning. Waves and waves and waves of mercy. We worship You, Father. This deep cries out to deep. Again and again, over and over. It's as worthy as the Lamb. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the life that you call us to, Father, the life that you continually want to pour into us. You want to be that river of life for us, Father. You want us to be planted in you, Father. Help us, Lord, this morning, continue to speak to us, Lord. Help us to continue to, to work at, to not shy away from the work, the spiritual work of communing with you, the spiritual work of hearing from you, the spiritual work of, of fighting off the flesh and, and our temptations of contentment, our, cont our temptations of distraction and and hard-heartedness, Lord. Help us, Lord, to push past, Lord, to push into the holy place where you are, where you desire to reveal things to us, Father, for our good, reveal things to us, Father, for the good of our families, Father, reveal things to us, Lord, that are good for our neighbors and, and good for the lost. Equip us, Lord. Thank you that you are so faithful when we 
when we seek you and we bend our knee. We don't shy away from you. We don't shy away from your word, Lord. You are so faithful and kind. Help us, Lord, to have more faith for that work and more faith for that that process of submission to you. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, one thing, if we can uh, just close our eyes again right now, I missed an opportunity earlier to pray for uh, the Balishes' uh, daughter, Bob and Marty Balish. Their daughter is in the ICU with pneumonia. So let's just pray for her real quick, even though I'm trying to do that before the service starts. So, Lord, we lift up the Balishes' father, we lift up their daughter, and ask Father for healing for her. Lord, from this uh, sickness, in Jesus' name, we cover her. Ask for your hedge of protection around her, Father God. Protection from any other viruses at the hospital, Father, that, that would want to attach themselves to her. Ask for complete healing, Lord, and strength for her body, Father. Give her lungs strength, Father. Give her blood supply strength, Father. Give the doctors, Lord, wisdom in, in how they're treating her. Ask for this covering for her, Father, for this release from the ICU, from the release from the hospital, Lord, with a clean bill of health. We ask for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to move into praying for the children and praying for the tithe. Is there somebody that would like to Strike that up with us. Thank you, Tom. Lord Jesus, today, thank you. Thank you so much for everything. We look around. You've given us more than <laughs> just so much more. I mean, there are people who don't have, and we have, right here among us. And we have the finances to prove our walk with you and how you've been gracious to us and today we want to give back to you so that your kingdom can continue to grow and be strong and people can come and say this is where i live this is where my home is we thank you for the children today lord that we have so many children lord i just pray for those children that their minds would get opened up their eyes would see their ears would hear, and their mouths would be able to speak about who you are and what you're all about to other people. We just thank you for the teachers that teach them. I pray for them that you would minister to their minds and to their hearts and to their souls so that they can speak to these children through your Holy Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, I don't want to skip past. If there was something the Lord was specifically giving you for the body out of worship, just as the kids are released, I uh, just want to give that opportunity. If there's a passage or just a word of wisdom that the Lord had for you to share. If not, that's okay, but great. I have Psalm 36, 8 through 10, reading from the Passion Translation, which they strive to capture the nuances from the original language a little more. It says, all may drink of the anointing from the abundance of your house. All may drink their fill from the delightful springs of Eden. To know you is to experience a flowing 
fountain, drinking in your life, springing up to satisfy. In the light of your holiness, we receive the light of revelation. Lord, keep pouring out your unfailing love on those who are near you. Release more of your blessings to those who are loyal to you. Amen. Thank you, Captain. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, welcome Isaiah. Share the word. Amen. Well, God has given it to us in abundance and he has given to us in ways that we can not even see fully yet or not even understand fully yet, but God has given them to us to begin to look at and, and to grow from and see. And that well and that spring that we talked about in the water that we were just listening to is part of that depth. That as you drink water and as you consume it and as you put it into your body, it does different things. It, it just goes into you and it begins to, to do a process in you that you don't even physically understand. You do when you're dehydrated or you do when you're thirsty or you do when you're in a place where you're really parched. But, but God is doing an internal work and an internal thing in us that he wants to continue to flourish us with. He wants to hydrate us with and fill us with and give us endurance with. Because without water, without the true living water, we have no endurance and we dry up. We just dry up. And there's no way we can get around it, no way we can avoid it. Our bodies spiritually dry up and physically do the same when you don't have water. And God's saying that you can come and that we can, that we can come and we can drink and we can, we can take part of that water and that life that He has. And it's just exciting to, to, to hear that again. It's exciting to be a part of that again. And I, God has just been stirring me with hearing the same things but having them become new. Because in our Christian faith, we're taught and we're told different things. We hear different things about life and water or truth and different stuff. And it just kind of becomes the norm. But God has really been stirring that word of, of, diff, of His words of truth become refreshed, become new. And I'd ask you if you, you've heard those things before over and over again, certain specific words like water or drinking from the well. We'd ask ourselves, how does that apply? And what is God trying to stir a new fire in me, or how is he, I guess. But as I was processing the work of where we've been and, and, and looking at that, and we've been praying together as elders, and the Lord really has stirred the word about raising the bar, setting a new standard for ourselves, raising the bar. Raising the spiritual bar. What does that mean? It means raising the standards or the expectations for our walk with the Lord. How does that look and what does that feel like? But as we've been moving, sometimes it gets mixed in with corporate things or family items or home group things, or what we should do. But God has really been speaking about individually what we need to do in our lives to raise the bar or raise the standard of our spiritual walk with Him. And Mike shared last week a little bit about, about the chains and about trying to get an alignment and trying to be the fulfillment of God's word and where that goes and how we loose those things and get rid of those things. And God continually is working in that manner with us to, to look and examine and consider Him in all things. But that standard needs to be set and raised for ourselves and us individually needs to be lifted how do we raise the standard? Or what, what are the expectations for my walk with the Lord? How do we do that? You know, as we consider that, there's that saying that if you do something 
over and over and over again, and you get the same results, and you expect it to be different, what's that called? Insanity, right? So if we've set the standard of our Christian walk with the Lord, but we have this expectation of things being different, and we never change, or we never grow, or we never engage with God like he's asking us to, we're expecting something that isn't going to be, right? That's what he's telling me. We're expecting something that, that isn't, but we're believing it. No, it has to be. It has to. We have to get through this. He says, believe and do all these things and trust, but we've never changed. And we've never, we've never set an expectation for ourselves to be any different. Then we should be satisfied with the results that we have that we're still where we are. We shouldn't expect something different. Because if we do, we're going to be let down. We're going to be depressed and frustrated at why we can't move. Ephesians 5, the Lord took me there again, 15 and 16. It's about walking circumspectly again. Circumspectly. What does that mean? It's, circumspect means to consider, to look around, and to be cautious and to be aware. Not fools, but wise so Ephesians 5.15 says, Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time. There's a time frame and a work that God has us in, and we need to redeem it. Going into 21 and the new year and all the things that we've set up, there's a time frame and a workout process that God has us in. We need to begin to set those expectations and consider very deeply where we are and what expectations we have for our spiritual walk with the Lord, where it is, what it means. Or the things that we want to get to and the goals that we want to obtain, we're always going to be let down when we don't get there because we never set a different standard. We've never set higher expectations for our walk. And that goes with dieting and fasting and working or that goes with anything that you apply. If you don't set the standard or you don't go to the next level, you don't dig deep, you don't get what you don't work for. And that's part of the process that God's, that God's been, been, been working in. He's given us an opportunity, amen? He's given it to us today. Today we have another opportunity to grow and to move in Him and to get, to get water from a, from a well that is deeper and richer and, and wider than anything that we could ever fathom. We have an opportunity, and it is such a blessing. Such a blessing. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. And actually, let's just read verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us. Running the race. There are some key words in here that I never recognized. And that is, that is set before us. That it is set before you. We sometimes choose if we want to run the race or not or engage in it, but God is saying it is set before you. Regardless, however you decide to run it, it's before you. I was like, wow, Lord, I... we don't have a choice in that matter. That if we've accepted Christ as our Savior, if we've accepted Him as our Lord, and we've began this journey with Him, that this is the pace, this is the workout that has been set before us to run a race. And once I began to think about that, I thought, well, what does that mean then if, I'm, if it's set before me? It means that everything that I choose from that point on, knowing that it's set before me, applies to the race. Right? Everything that I do, everything that I don't do, affects the outcome. 
affects where I'm going to go and how successful I will be. My spiritual walk with the Lord. My life, my family, life outside, how I listen, how I move. Running the race, and it says run it with endurance. That's a choice. You can choose to endure or you can choose to be lazy. Does physical condition stop a runner? Or does he choose to push through the pressure and the work and the breathing and the effort when he's dying? Right? It's a choice to endure. The Lord says to endure. He encourages us that the race is set before us. Endure. I'm encouraged by that. That I can push myself. I can set expectations. I can set standards higher than I ever thought. That we can do this. That he's saying, I've given you the strength. I've given you the endurance spiritually beyond what you believe because you don't know what the water is doing in your body. You don't have all the knowledge and the wisdom to understand, but it's nourishing you. We need to trust in God. We need to trust that his purposes are good. We need to go to the well. First Corinthians nine. Yes, Lord. Emphasizing again for us that we are in a race. The Father just stirs that in me again to to hear it for myself and apply it. It says, do you not know that that those who, who run in a race all run? No, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 24. Yep, 24. Do you not know that those who Run in a race, they all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And there was the connection again that we have to understand why we're running. And running with certainty, running with an understanding of this race and it being set before us and it being a process that our standards, they need to. Or else we're fools and we're not, we're not listening to the word and we're not really understanding what God has set before us and saying that we're in. We're in a race for our lives. We're in a race for the, for the, the, ultimate, the ultimate life with Christ. And if we've set that bar... And if we begin to look at that, we begin to understand that we're in the race and we need to win the prize, then our spiritual vehicle needs alignment. And we need to be aligned with the Lord. We need to get into His purposes and His plans. And I was asking the Lord about that word because we've been talking about it a lot, about alignment, right? Getting into alignment with God and that process of setting standards and goals and working that out and hearing the Father and doing things and going outside of our, our, ourselves. Alignment is necessary and it has its purpose. And the Lord took me into my own vehicle, right? And if we all look around, we all have cars, trucks, semis, different things that we all have transportation in, right? We have those modes of transportation that we have, and every one of them has a steering mechanism that drives that unit, every single one of them, from the smallest to the biggest. And eventually, if you want to save your tires, you want to keep yourself on the road, you get an alignment. You have to. It's part of the, the process of, of auto, auto stuff. And as you take your car in to get an alignment, what happens? They put it up on a lift and they examine your ball joints, your, your drive, all your steering knuckles, your tie rod ends, and make sure everything's tight and there's nothing loose. 
And then they go through the process of working through that vehicle to get it into alignment. And they set gauges and they set the toe and the pitch of the wheels and everything so it goes down the road just right. But there's another process that happens after that alignment. That's the examination by the technician or the, or the auto man that goes underneath the vehicle and inspects it. And I was really thinking about that, like going under there and inspecting. And as we go down that road with our own vehicles, you're like, whoa, you know, that's, there's things there that we, we start to see. And we're like, well, we can, can wait on this to get fixed or we can do that. But the inspector goes through or the technician goes through to keep you on the road safely. And he goes through and he'll tell you, you know, this is bad or this is loose or this doesn't work or you've got a major leak here or we see lines that are failing there. But what is, when he's under there looking, is he just going under there blind? Or does he have something, a major tool to see with? This is what the other, the other part of the process that I heard the Lord saying was, there's light Whenever you're in a closet or you're in a closed area, you're trying to find something and someone turns a light on, it's like, whoo, I can see. The same examination process happens when you go in for an alignment, you go in to get checked out, they boom, they turn the light on and they begin to look at everything and it exposes all the things that are working and failing that aren't working, right? Light has its purpose. The Spirit is, is the technician that is coming in. We're in alignment process with God and the Spirit is exposing us. And light has come in and it's saying, this area and this area, to get this vehicle, this spiritual vehicle moving and directed, this needs fixed and this needs taken care of. I am a man that needs that alignment process and we are a people who need that work of the light to come in. We need it to expose us so that, we can, so that we can fix the problems. Because that was the purpose that I heard in Mike's teaching. He said, God is the key, right, to all the chains and all those things. But we take that key and we can do something with the key or not. We can plug it in and unlock things. God has given us a free will to examine and understand the carriage of our spiritual vehicle to see what's exposed and what needs fixed and changed. And he gives us the keys. Now it's our responsibility to begin to open and change and fix that problem for the betterment of our spiritual walk and life with God, setting a different standard and setting the bar higher, walking with God. Ephesians 5 13. Thank you, Lord. But all things that are exposed are made manifested by the light. Or whatever makes manifest is light. Everything under the carriage of our spiritual vehicle is exposed and the craftsmanship thereof is looked at and examined. God has been exposing and working through the process with us so that we can fix those problems. So we can count the cost of what it takes to get them fixed. We read last week and again, God reassured us that there isn't condemnation. Romans 8, therefore there is no condemnation. It's not condemning. You don't look at the process of your vehicle and say, because it needs alignment and because it needs a brake job, get it out of here, throw it away, condemn the thing to the junkyard, right? That isn't the process that we do. It's to build us up and to encourage us and to strengthen us and to build us into the things that we need so that we can continue to move and we continue to get to the Father, running the race with endurance. No condemnation. Clarity. Clarity. Repentance. Work of that. Not condemnation. Without God's light and His illumination, we will miss and we cannot see our problem areas. They will not be exposed. We need Him. We are lost and will never find Him. Thank you, Lord. There's a heart of thanksgiving around this exposure that we really need to begin to embrace and not reject from God. I just highlighted that in that work, that we really need to be thankful 
I mean, thankful people that works that we can see the areas that God wants us to change. Think of all those who have no idea and are running the, this, this crazy course. We are surrounded with it. And we're getting tempted to get drug in there. We're getting tempted to be pulled into that self. Us. What we deserve. And that is a lie from the enemy. We have been given and we don't deserve. We have been given. And we need to act out of that thanksgiving and a thankful heart. We've been given a lot. The other fact of the matter is, is that we have free will. And as we begin to process the repairs, and we're going to go physical and we're going to go spiritual and we're going to try to, try to hear those, those parallels as your vehicle is up there getting looked at and the spiritual vehicle of your life, it's getting looked at. The mechanics are going to call you. The technicians are going to say something to you. And we can probably laugh about it. They're going to tell you a lot of things that aren't wrong, right, to get your money. But that's not the truth about God. God's going to tell you specifically, and we're going to look at this from a pure perspective, that he is going to tell you specifically the areas that you're failing and the things that are wrong. And you have to count the cost to depend on if you're going to take the repairs or you're going to walk away and put it on the ground and take it out the door. Because you can. We have the ability to take the key and unlock those things and get rid of them because God's given us. He is the key. But it takes our effort, it's our free will, it's the freedom, it's the beauty, it's the thankful heart that prepares the way. It's the work. We need to begin to make choices then about counting the cost, what that means. Because if you set your vehicle, your spiritual vehicle down with a leaky transmission, loose ball joints, and a drive shaft that's ready to fall off, are you getting very far? No. You're running on spare time. We're foolish, and that's the word, foolish. Not looking circumspectly at our own vehicles and setting a standard that's higher than that. And then being frustrated because we're back again going, man, I just wish I could, I want to proceed out. I want to go forward and move. I want to get out of here. And God's saying, just look at this. Just take, take some time. And I want to move continually into that work of the car and the vehicle moving forward right now. If we would go to 1 Corinthians 9.24, because as I, as I process this, and the Lord was really working that and stirring that in my heart about it, I, I saw something again. It's important. 1 Corinthians 9. Let's read it all. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. It's about the race again. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? It says this, run in such a way that you may obtain it. Or in other words, that you might win. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we, for an imperishable crown, we're running the spiritual race. That's what he's talking about, not a physical one. Therefore, I run thus, meaning I run this way, not with uncertainty. I don't run without a cause and a purpose. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Someone who's swinging a miss, trying to just go at, whack at the, whack at whatever is there with no purpose. But he does it. The Lord is telling us, run this way, not with uncertainty, but knowing why. And 27 says, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. We need to know what we're running and why we're running the race. And this is where the common use vehicle comes in. A lot of us have set the standard in our lives of common use. 
that we are a common transportation vehicle, right? That that's the perspective, that I need to fix this, this common use vehicle to get me back out on the road. But God has begun to expose a standard that's higher than common use. If you believe that you're a, a, a taxi van and God says you are an IndyCar 500 racer, what does that do? It changes perspective because now if you're running a race, this is a race, this isn't, this isn't transportation. And it became clear that we are in a race. We are not in common transportation because that's not what his word says. His word says that you need to set yourselves up for the race. The perspective of running needs to have a purpose. It needs to have a goal. Don't be fools. Don't miss this perspective that you are in a serious race for your lives. It's an Indy 500. Then I started to think about the parts and the pieces on the vehicle. Why they're so important to put good things and why the standard needs to be raised and why the work needs to be put in. It's because we're functioning on, 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 a, on a minuscule things when God's saying you are in a high performance vehicle that has everything it needs to succeed. And the enemy knows that. And he's, he's lied to you and said that you can get by with the expectation of a common use vehicle. And that's the standard we set for Christ here at, at church and in our own lives. We've kind of just had this idea that we can, we can work and it's convicting me and convicting of my heart. So we need to hear that together. That this isn't a corporate thing. It's just an expression of what God's saying individually here. And again, stay focused individually. Where am I in this race? But that's kind of the standard we've set. It's just subpar. It's just to get us, we can just get by. We, we feel comfortable with that and it's a little stretch to do other things. But God's saying, I want you to put the race car tires on. I want the fuel in there. I want the engine built with all the components to work and to put power on the ground and put everything, the drivetrain, honed in. This thing has to be a race vehicle, not a common use vehicle. But that's understanding how we're running. That's understanding that we have, the race has been set before us. You can't choose if you're, you're in the race, but you can choose what you run in the race. You can choose to take the van out on the track. <laughs> Smile at my dad. I guarantee you, give, it a, give her a run. <laughs> but when you look at aerodynamics and you look at the per precision and the grip of everything that the thing needs to do to work, it won't even, it won't make it out of the whole shot. Gone, done. Set the standard higher. Understand the spiritual bar. Understand the purpose of why you're running. Understand that we're in a race for our lives. Understand that without Christ's light exposing every area underneath our spiritual vehicle, we won't succeed. And I started to process, well, Lord, if I've got to put all this money into this vehicle to get it up, and I've got to, this is an expense, right? Not only am I counting the cost of rebuilding my own common use vehicle now I've got to try to figure out how I'm going to pay for all these parts because I've got to transform this thing into no you don't have to transform anything you and I need to be obedient to the word of God the transformation happens when we drink from the well the transformation happens when we consume spiritual things the transformation happens when I spend time listening to the word and then acting and being obedient to what he said. We can't pay for it. We don't have it. We don't have enough. And we will continually if we think that we can continue to be looking for that way, be frustrated when we put our dependency on our own ideas, our own standards. But there is one, and I began to read this morning in Isaiah 55. Let's go there. Okay. 
because I am so encouraged by what the Lord says that he supplies. I'm just, I'm taken back. Because he supplies. And in closing, I'll read this passage. Allow the Lord to minister to us as he does so awesome. He is so awesome. God is so good. The word says, Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And that word just sunk in. It sunk into the process so that I don't have enough. I can't afford it. I can't afford to do all these things. I, I, but I can put the time in and the energy. And I can discipline myself. Just as the word says, I discipline my, I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection. I can do that. But he says, come by without money. Without a price. He's the one that supplies the parts. He's the one who supplies the necessary tools and things to get us into the high performance place of spiritual growth with Him. Why do you spend money on what is not bread? And I hear the Lord's correction right now in my own heart. Why do you spend money on what is not bread and your wages on what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Walk circumspectly, I hear the word saying, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time. Amen? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in the abundance because there is an abundance with the Father where there is nothing in this world that will satisfy. There's an abundance in Christ Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David, indeed I have given him as a witness to the people and a leader and a commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know and nations who do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Redeem the time, I hear the word saying again. Redeem the time. We have a new year set before us. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord. Father, your mercy. Oh, your mercy, Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amazing. Thankful hearts. For the Lord says that my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven... And do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Amen. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent. And the song we sang last week to go out is the word that is read today. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up a cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come up a myrtle tree. And that shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not 
be cut off. It won't end. God's well is deep and it will never stop. Let's go out with joy. Let's be led forth with peace. Let's clap our hands and be excited as God reveals truth in His Word and the waters our souls. Amen. 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 Let's go out. Let's go forth. We are dismissed. Contact information is, is below, and, and please, please reach out. We'd also encourage you to stay connected to your local church if you have one. Mm -hmm. If you don't, we'd love you to join us on Sunday mornings here at 10 a.m. We love you, and God bless you.